EPA and WA meteorologist Bobby Merkinshire with your outlook for January 16th, 2020. For today, your Thursday, we're going to have the transition day we've been talking about for a while. We're going to be going from the milder temperatures that we've seen for quite some time now. Uh, they're going to start off that way this morning, but then the temperatures are going to fall this afternoon. We're going to have windy conditions today. We're going to have a few areas getting a few snow showers and maybe a heavier squall as this transition occurs. So uh, not everywhere, but it looks like along and north of 78 is where your, uh, where your window of opportunity for some snow squalls are today or snow showers. Probably north of there, but south of there, it's not impossible to see something uh, venture that far south. But uh, here's a look at the map today. It's going to be turning cooler in the wake of, of that system that moved through last night, brought us a few rain showers and some snow up into northern New England. Uh, here is a look at the winds today, and we're generally looking at gusts 25 to 35 miles per hour for the most part. The most frequent gust will be in that range. You will have a few areas that will see a few gusts in the 40 to 45 to, uh, 40 to 45 mile per hour range, uh, mainly following elevation, but a few areas outside of that could gust over 40. But I don't think it's going to be one of those deals that's going to get you 50 plus, not one of those kind of days. The thing with this, though, is that it is a long-duration event. It's going to start picking up this morning, and then once we get into the afternoon, evening, and at least the first part of the overnight, I think it's going to be especially uh, windy where you're going to have that 25 to the frequent 25 to 35 mile, mile per hour gusts and uh, occasionally a few gusts going over 40 miles per hour. And that's going to, again, that's going to go th right through the night, I think. And then when you get into, you get after midnight, your, your gusts are more... 20, 20 to 30 or maybe up to 35 or so and then that's going to go right into early Friday morning and then we finally start to diminish uh, during the course of the morning on Friday. So there's going to be a long duration event as far as winds concerned. Uh, it doesn't take very high winds necessarily as a standalone thing to cause power outages. It could be a longer duration event of higher winds. Uh, even if it's not incredibly high, just that duration can knock out power to some customers. There might be some outages with that, so just keep that in mind. And then here is the snow shower shown on the NAM uh, high-res future simulated radar. This is mainly a mid-afternoon and into early evening deal. You see that right there? There's just a couple snow showers, snow squalls streaking down here. Might get down as far as uh, 78. I wouldn't be surprised if a few get a little bit further south in there, but the majority of them are going to be uh, north of I-78 between the New York, Pennsylvania New York border and uh, the I-78 Carter. So hit or miss, If you but if you get under one of these, it can give you some blinding snow rates and poor visibility. So be uh, be aware of that today as well if you're traveling this afternoon and evening. So getting back to global models, we're going to move ahead to our next system here, which of course is the weekend system. Everybody wants to know about what's going to happen with that. We didn't release any public maps yet. We are planning to do so today at 5 p.m. so we'll have our first maps for the system and I'm saying maps because I think we're gonna have to have separate maps for both snow and ice because we have a two different two-headed monster here I don't think this is going to be an all snow event uh, for anywhere across our region there's a possibility that some could remain still snow we're still kind of earn that uh, ironing that out but if that takes place the highest probability for that to occur would be up here in the northeastern corner of Pennsylvania and uh, far northwestern New Jersey but here's our system coming in and uh, this is going to initially arrive on uh, Saturday morning. It looks like it's going to be kind of like mid to late morning for an arrival time. And I do think it starts off as snow just about everywhere across our region. So uh, might not last too long further south as it does further north, but uh, you're going to have a little bit of snow at the onset. It might give you a quick coating to an inch or two on the front end. Then uh, we, I, the global models aren't indicating this here. There's going to be a transition at some point to sleep, freezing rain. Might even go back to, in some of the uh, uh, areas in far eastern and northeastern areas, closest to the high pressure that's drawing this cold air in, because that's right here. Big high pressure sitting here in advance of this precipitation coming in. Uh, there might be enough cold air involved with this in the lower levels to keep this all frozen, mainly northwest of I-95 for the entire event. And I know you'll, you're going to see in your local forecasts, uh, some temperatures that are above freezing. Maybe you see an app forecasting, well, it's going to be 34 degrees. It's going to change the rain at some point. Uh, that 34 degree high might come at midnight and the precipitation ends at, uh, you know, 8, 9 o'clock at night and it's already long gone before, you know, so it, so the precipitation, when the precipitation ends, it's still 32 or below. And then after it stops, 
the temperatures rise a little bit above freezing. Well, it doesn't really matter at that point because there's no precipitation left, right? The damage is already done. So I think that's what we're trending toward, a, a mostly frozen event, if not all, northwest of I-95. Once the precipitation ends, we do uh, for at least four or five hours go above freezing before temperatures crash again late Saturday night. Okay, so we're going to be ironing out these precipitation types and the breakdown of such. But I do think you start off with snow everywhere, and then you go over to maybe an extended period for some areas of sleet, and then freezing rain for others. Rain further south, I think the further south areas would be southeast of I-95 for the most part for that rain to occur. Now here's the uh, NAM. This I don't have the uh, the NAM high res just yet because it's not. I'll probably have that. Uh, uh, in tomorrow's uh, video, but uh, this is not in range yet for the three uh, three kilometer NAM. So this is the uh, 12 kilometer NAM, which is the regular NAM, not the high resolution version. It does show here at this is looking at uh, 7 a.m. on Saturday, and you progress this forward. You do see the snow on the front end. You see this is icing back here. So the pink that's indicated here will be freezing rain. This uh, oh, color that is there, pink, I guess, or lighter pink, uh, would be the sleet. This is all snow right here. So you do have snow at the onset, and this is looking at 10 a.m. So it's moving across as the state is coming in pretty quickly. So between, you know, 10, p 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., you start getting the snow moving into eastern Pennsylvania, and you have snow at the onset. Look at this area of sleet, though, behind it. So by the time we get to uh, 4 p.m. on, on uh, Saturday, that's showing this large area of sleet here where it's changed over. Still snow over here where it comes in initially in, in uh, uh, parts of northern and central New Jersey. And then look what happens after that. Right before it ends, it goes from this to this. It actually changes back to snow because you get some heavier rates that cools the column. That's a very distinct possibility that it might go for sleep for several hours and then go back to snow before it ends. But this is the, when the precipitation ends. This is looking at 7 p.m. It's already ending here. This is the back edge. So at the time, at this point, the precipitation's ending is frozen precipitation, again, northwest of I-95 because it's staying below freezing. Again, it does go... Uh, above freezing after that point once the precipitation's ended but again the damage is already done so we're going to be looking at this breaking it down giving our first call maps i don't wouldn't expect a ton of snow out of this the upside's not uh not that great and especially when you're dealing with a with mixing and going into sleet and other precipitation types that's going to cut down on potential accumulations and usually when you have warm air advection like this aloft just that little shallow warm layer aloft will be enough to change this over to sleet. Whenever that happens, it typically cuts down on the amounts of snow. So just uh, temper your snow expectations. Don't be looking for something that's going to get dumped here, six, eight inches of snow. It's probably not going to happen. And our snow maps are going to reflect that. are going to be a lot you know, less than that. Uh, so, you know, with the areas that you get sleet, sleet still accumulates. It still counts, but it's going to start compressing whatever snow fell uh, prior to that. So keep that all in mind. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, come out with the maps today at 5 o'clock, and it should break down everything we know by that point. Hopefully you'll have a better handle on what's happening. Uh, Thursday was our, always our target date because we have all the systems and on shore that are properly sampled, and the model should have a little bit better of a handle on it uh, at that time. If we need to, we'll fine-tune on Friday, but otherwise it looks like our calls will be out and good to go and ready for uh, 5 p.m. today. After the system leaves, it is brutally cold behind this, and I mean really cold. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, this will finish out our, our seven-day forecast window. It is dry this entire time, but uh, highs aren't going to be out of the 20s in most locations, at the very least Monday and Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday. Uh, but further south, you might get a little warmer than that, if you want to call it that, a couple degrees. But it looks like most areas are going to remain in the 20s all three days or close to it. Uh, so it's definitely going to be below freezing for highs, and then your uh, lows are going to be in the single digits to maybe lower teens a couple of those days. It's going to be pretty cold uh, in the beginning of next week, Monday through Wednesday. But it is dry as of right now. We're going to look ahead to the next storm signal, which will come in uh, the week after that. But we have time to look at that. That's down the road. I'm EPA WA Meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for January 16th, 2020. Have a great Thursday.